No one had any notion of the character of the man appointed Reich's Chancellor on January the 30th, 1933, whose love of very young women was almost pathological, who was incapable of close relationships, utterly ruthless, and would stop at nothing. His charisma as champion of the people was completely lacking in his private life. The new chancellor struck out boldly from the very first day. He ordered life according to an abstract conception of a national community. The individual meant nothing to him, a loner with no friends. Terror became the foundation of his policy and violence, not open but secret. The pall of greyness behind this barbed wire was enough to bring even the last remaining skeptics into line. Seine Hündin äh, wurde irgendwie nervös und hat meine Mutter ganz leicht gebissen, eigentlich mehr gezwickt. Und Hitlers Reaktion war exzessiv. Er wollte gehen, seine Pistole holen und sagte, er würde den Hund auf der Stelle erschießen. Just like Ernst Röhm, head of the SA, who had even been on first name terms with Hitler, his old comrade was crossed out in 1934. <laughs> Hitler, master of life and death, presented as a god at the party conference at Nuremberg. In rigid blocks, the masses cheered their Führer. The monumental, the geometric, the uniform spectacle all robbed people of intrinsic worth. It ensured distance for the man who could not bear closeness. Er hatte ja etwas gegen körperliche Berührung. Also das war, das war ja allgemein bekannt, dass auch jeder Arzt mit ihm große Schwierigkeiten hatte, weil er sich nicht gern anfassen ließ. Ich glaube, er hat also höchstens mal mit der Hand auf die, die Hand auf, die, auf den Arm von seiner Nachbarin gelegt. Oder, aber ähm, er hat sich auch nie massieren lassen wollen oder, oder solche Dinge. Das, da, war, da war er absolut äh, sehr zurückhaltend. Eva Brown had moved into Hitler's mansion. The transition from silly teenager to the woman at Hitler's side had been a stormy one for her. Hitler kept her at arm's length, like Mitzi Reiter and Gaily Raubal before her. Lightning visits, then months of silence, an on and off relationship that made Eva Braun miserable. Desperate, she wrote in her diary in 1935, why does he torment me like this? Why doesn't he just finish it? And a little later, I've decided to take 35. This time it's going to work. It was her second suicide attempt. By some miracle, she survived. Only then did Hitler relent and stop his games of torment. So he called her to the Berghof at the cost of total self-abnegation. In his shadow, she remained Fräulein Braun, the secret lover who had to call her beloved by his surname in front of guests. Ja, ja, also wir gingen zusammen spazieren und da sagte ich zu ihr fast provokativ, Frau Braun, Sie sind die beneidetste Frau in Deutschland, weil sie nun bei Adolf Hitler war. Nicht? Und dann sagte sie, oh Herr Frenz, ich bin nur eine Gefangene in einem goldenen Käfig. 
It was not the official guests, the powerful and the great of the Reich, who made up the everyday life at Hitler's house in the mountains. The tone was set by his surrogate family, just a little group, secretaries, adjutants, personal physicians. Sometimes the architect Albert Speer dropped in. Set apart from it all, the boss, as they called him. He didn't like new faces around him, so it was always the same old gang with the same shallow jokes. There wasn't a single one of them who would dare to contradict Hitler. It was not dialogue that Hitler was after. They were his audience. Hitler in private, he loved children. Children didn't contradict, just like everything else around him. Young women, his surrogate family, his dogs. At the center of the airless room stood Hitler himself. No tobacco, no alcohol, only his monologues. Often he spoke interminably, the others remaining silent. Less often they conversed. Then Hitler sat absently among them, at the center of the whole entourage, yet always distant. Hitler's private life was impoverished, always in company, but locked within himself. A walk to the Morslanerkopf, a ritual that Hitler followed to the bitter end. Always the same path, 30 minutes through the woods and the meadow, Hitler in front with a guest. That's the way it always was, with his entourage at a respectful distance behind. Once they arrived, there were tea and cakes in the pavilion that had been specially carved out of the rock. Day in, day out, always the same. Sie sind ein Fantast. Da kann ich ihm nur antworten, Sie, Idiot, wenn ich nie in meinem Leben ein Fantast gewesen wäre, wo wären Sie und wo wären wir heute alle? Ich habe immer an die deutsche Zukunft geglaubt. Sie haben damals gesagt, Sie sind ein Fantast. Ich habe immer an die Auferstehung des Deutschen Reiches geglaubt. Sie sagten immer, Sie sind ein Narr. Ich habe immer geglaubt an die Wiederaufrichtung einer deutschen Macht. Sie sagten immer, ich sei wahnsinnig. Ich habe geglaubt an die Beseitigung unserer Wirtschaftsnot. Sie sagten, das sei eine Utopie. Wer hat nun Recht gehabt? Der Fantast oder Sie? Ich habe Recht gehabt und ich werde auch für die Zukunft Recht haben. After five years of dictatorship, Hitler was more popular than ever. Terror was the foundation, but his successes were overwhelming. The people kept in step with a Führer who remained always the same. Meine Herren, ich werde Ihnen was sagen, wenn Sie glauben, ich habe nur ein paar geschrumpelte Stiefel, die lasse ich ununterbrochen kopieren und ich habe zehn Paar davon. Ich muss als der Chef des Staates, als der Führer der deutschen Nation immer gleich aussehen und muss dabei bleiben, wie ich bin. Schon die Pharaonen sind immer mit der Goldmaske erschienen, damit sie gleich sind. Und das ist absolut notwendig. Ich kann da nichts ändern. Even his taste in art became the common standard. He had the final say in the choice of pictures for every German art exhibition. Everything was the same all over the country. The pictures, even if sometimes painted by experts, were soulless. The people all looked alike and were alike. The country was full of celebration and yet still a mirror of his monotonous soul. He promoted the art he liked and persecuted what he didn't understand. 